Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kitty Mary and today is another impact analysis. Today I want to talk about luxury brand designer labels but in contrast to fast fashion. While there are many perspectives that are interesting to talk about that this video could also include like how luxury brands have attributed to beauty standards and body image issues this video is going to focus on sustainability but there are other issues that we could talk about as well so let me know if that's something you would be interested in now designer labels and luxury products are often associated with a high level of craftsmanship some sort of exclusivity high quality materials and a level of uniqueness and of course a price tag to match in many ways designer fashion functions as an opposition to fast fashion with their low quality materials and their affordable prices and their mass production. Actually, the fast fashion industry is producing almost 100 billion pieces of clothing every single year. And these clothes are produced both unethically and unsustainably. The people working in fast fashion sweatshops are working more than 19 hours a day for way, 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 way way below minimum wage. Furthermore, the materials that are being used in the fast fashion industry are also really unsustainable and really resource intensive to make. So polyester and cotton are the two most used materials and they both take a huge toll on our environment. Actually, I have a detailed analysis of both conventional cotton versus organic cotton and I also have an impact analysis of the fast fashion industry in general if you want to dive into the details a little bit more. The bottom line is that this industry is incredibly polluting and unsustainable. So the question is, does the higher price tag of luxury goods also mean that the products are produced more sustainably or more ethically? Currently, luxury fashion is one of the most rapidly expanding and well-performing industries with leading firms experiencing double-digit growth just in the last few years. While luxury has been a concept throughout the vast majority of human history, what constitutes logic has changed many times over. An original comprehension of luxury, for instance, does not suggest the production of expensive materials, but was more so related to a mental state that separated humans from animals. What is typically associated with luxury today has its roots in aristocracy as well as the developments of the Industrial Revolution. Historically, luxury has also been a tool of religious symbolism, where the presence of expensive objects associates an institution or figure to the closeness of the divine. Why is this important? Well, I do like to understand things thoroughly before I start breaking them apart in a second. <laughs> of course, today, as well as through a lot portion of our history, luxury is associated with materialistic and economic prosperity, or the symbolism of it. So why do we buy expensive things? When you buy a luxury product, you're not necessarily paying for unique and quality craftsmanship. Don't get me wrong, sometimes you are, but it's not a given. Designer brands do offer higher quality than fast fashion products, sometimes. When it comes to many designer products like designer bags or shoes or watches, it is estimated or there is a general public acknowledgement that those products, when they come with a higher price tag from luxury brands, also have higher quality or consist of higher quality than fast fashion products. And in many cases, that is definitely true. However, many designer labels also carry plain white t-shirts and black socks, and those are made from the exact same materials as many fast fashion products and are not necessarily higher quality. So when you pay $500 for white t-shirts, with a logo on it, you're in fact paying for something other than quality. The main selling point of designer labels is the status symbol that is acquired when you wear those labels. When buying a designer product, the consumer partakes in the brand lifestyle, the brand identity, and they're symbolizing or signaling to their surroundings that they can in fact afford to partake in this lifestyle. That's what we're buying. That's why designer labels spend a huge portion of their profits on marketing campaigns and maintaining their public brand identity. It's definitely giving, don't be ridiculous, Andrea. Everybody wants this. Everybody wants to be us. Many reports and investigations show that people working in factories that are producing designer labels and luxury products aren't necessarily getting paid any better wages than those people working in fast fashion sweatshops. Furthermore, many European luxury brands are actually utilizing the, at this point, widespread consumer knowledge that the, the products that are created in especially China, Bangladesh and India are created in sweatshops and thus therefore are bad and many luxury brands are using this common knowledge in order to distance themselves from that bad branding even though they're still definitely doing it. Many European luxury brands are using the made in Europe tag label 
etc to sort of insinuate that the products are made more ethically more sustainably and that people are in fact getting paid but there are also sweatshops in Europe and people are also being exploited for their labor in Europe. Made in Europe doesn't inherently mean that there has been no forced labor, no child labor, no, no working way below minimum wage, no working in unsafe, unhealthy, hazardous working conditions. All of this is still very much very much a risk. Countries in Europe that are in especially high risk for supply chain issues and unsustainable and unethical labor include Turkey, Georgia, Bulgaria, Romania, and some investigations even find that there can be even worse wage gap differences and issues in these factories than there are in sweatshops in Asia. Made in Europe means nothing. It means that you're exploiting people in your own part of the world. Congratulations. A report from Clean Clothes campaign from 2020 showed that the European production of designer goods from Versace, Dolce Gabbana and Armani included an immense gap between the legal minimum wages and the estimated minimum living wages. And they are not the outlier. If we take a look at the Fashion Revolution's Fashion Transparency Index from 2022, we can see that no brand, fast fashion nor designer reached a transparency score higher than that of 80%. And many designer brands like Gary Weber, Marnie, Max Mara, Valentino, Dolce Gabbana, Tory Burch, DKNY and Tom Ford are ranked just as badly as the worst of the worst of fast fashion. They're ranked on the same level as Shein, Fashion Nova, Romwe. Awkward. This report also shows that across designer labels as well as fast fashion, 89% of the brands publish their supplier policies regarding child labor. However, less than 50% disclose how their policies are actually implemented, meaning there is no documentation to support that anything is really being done about it. They just have some feelings about what they could potentially do. Feelings are irrelevant. Sorry. In a similar fashion, 82% of brands investigated have policies that dictate ethical working hours and proper breaks for workers, yet merely 34% actually show how they are achieving their goals. Many of these issues arise because of similar reasons to why we see them in the fast fashion industry. These brands, even the luxury ones, have little to no traceability in their supply chain. And when there's no way to trace the work, there's also no way to trace the issues in the supply chain. And as such, there's no way to guarantee that exploitation is not happening, which means that it most likely is. Yes, we're really just glass half empty over here. Check out how many brands scored between 0 and 5% on their traceability ranking. Burberry, Celine, Chanel, Louis Vuitton, Michael Kors, Versace, Amani, Diesel, DKNY, Marnie, Axmara, Tom Ford and Valentino. And do you want to know how much the bar is just on the floor. Only 11% of the brands in this report disclosed if their factories have a trade union. Only 10% published the certifications that their factory holds. 3% disclosed how many audits included a trade union representative. 18% disclosed the outcomes of steps taken to address environmental violations. And only 15% did the same thing with human rights. Only 6% support how they're working towards paying their workers fair wages. And only 7% published the number of days it takes for the brand to pay the workers after orders have been delivered. Moreover, in 2019, the head of a textile company working with Saint Laurent, Armani and Fendi was arrested in Italy. The charges were forced labor, abductions and paying undocumented workers way, 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 way below minimum wage. During a raid, the workers were hiding behind rolls of leather and among them were a pregnant woman and several teenagers. However, as an interviewed worker also pointed out, the production chain is too long. It happens that the original suppliers subcontract to other companies without the brands knowing. This was said by an anonymous worker about this situation. There are the exact same opaque issues in the supply chain, whether you're buying a $10,000 bag or you're buying a $10 bag. Figure. And that's because the entire textile industry is incredibly problematic and there are definitely issues with traceability throughout the entire textile industry. This is what happens when an industry is based on a combination of overconsumption and exclusivity. However, it could be argued that luxury brands are inherently more sustainable than fast fashion simply because 
luxury brands are producing less products than fast fashion. However, it doesn't really take away from the fact that luxury brands are still exploiting labor and still using unnecessary resources, even if it's not to the insane extent of fast fashion. I would like to make the point that overall it's incredibly difficult to remove fast fashion and luxury fashion from each other completely. They are not to be understood as two separate entities because they are in fact constantly working together and have overlapping supply chains. So they cannot be understood as two separate entities. But some brands must be doing something right, right? A study from 2022 showed that consumers assumed that brands like Chanel, Hermes and Dior was among the most sustainable luxury brands in the world. However, while Chanel uses some eco-friendly materials, there has been no evidence to support any meaningful action to reduce hazardous materials or chemicals nor textile waste from their supply chain. And according to the Fashion Transparency Index, there are also no evidence to support that the brand has done anything to ensure living wages in their supply chains. And that goes for Hermes and Dior as well, and many other brands. Clearly. In contrast, there are brands like Gucci, Stella McCartney, Vivian Westwood, among others, that are doing something in the right direction. They are using more recycled materials, more eco-friendly materials in general, and eliminating textile waste from their supply chain. And they are also reducing the amount of chrome that they use in the tanning process of their leathers. These brands also have evidence to support that they are in fact documenting the reduction of their greenhouse gas emissions. On the Fashion Transparency Index, they also received a much higher score than brands like Chanel, which were ranked at around 11 to 20% transparency, while brands like Stella McCartney, Gucci, etc. is at the 41 to 50% transparency. So the bar is still on the floor. And even with the better brands, there is still very little evidence to support that workers that are making these products are being paid fair wages. They are very much not what I said it was a start. Overall, when it comes to these big luxury brands, the bar is just on the floor. A lot of these brands are doing small individual things to, to reduce impact and, and to generally try to be more conscious, but in no way near enough for me to call them a sustainable brand. If you want more suggestions on what brands are in fact sustainable, I have a list of eco brands I stand by that I'll link down below. While I believe that there are many completely wasteful products out there also from luxury brands and I have very little if anything positive to say about the expensive and resource intensive PR stunts and the gimmicky clothes or the gimmicky accessories that many luxury brands are coming up with for PR purposes. I have very little to say about that. That's positive, really. However, scouting for good quality materials that can last a lifetime is definitely something that I understand. Timeless versatility and good craftsmanship are something that's completely understandable to acquire. If you want to acquire more luxury goods or more high quality things, going for designer labels that are vintage or pre-loved is a really good option because at this point selling designer goods, reselling designer goods isn't a, a new thing. It's been going on for ages as long as we've had designer brands really. So it's a very easily available option if you want to buy something that's of higher quality and represents a label that you like and the aesthetic is beautiful etc and the craftsmanship too going pre-loved is a pretty good idea. And when you're buying luxury goods, looking at what type of materials have been used is also incredibly important because that does says a lot about how long these products will last. Going for organic cotton, any type of natural material is a plus. I don't understand any luxury brand that carry polyester clothing. I think it's absolute poppycock, honestly. And of course, looking for third-party certification is really important when it comes to any kind of clothing purchase or any kind of purchase in general. I also have a list and a guide on how to understand and read the certification levels better. So I'll leave that down below as well. The most important thing is to not overconsume and only buying what we need. As such, I have absolutely zero praise for people that live lavish lifestyles where they have dozens of designer products that they're never ever using. And yes, before any genius comments this down below, it's definitely because I am super, super jealous. Just jealous. Oh, so jealous. Oh, I wish it was me. It's only very uninteresting people that feel like they need to buy this excessive amount of designer labels in order to have a personality. I'm so sorry. However, I do understand wanting to own a piece that you love the look of and that you can wear for decades. And if you maintain it right, it will last you a lifetime. However, of course, that can also be said about certain fast fashion items that are maintained properly. I think stating anything else is giving designer labels way too much credit. Lastly, I think it's important to separate the brand's exclusivity from actual quality. 
or merely the idea of luxury and quality. And look at the product's actual makeup and what they're actually made out of and if they are in fact quality products. Nothing is inherently a quality product just because it comes from a certain brand. Not all designer products are created equally. So I think it's our job as consumers to make sure that we're buying mindfully and consciously, but also buying things that will actually last a lifetime and not things that are just promising it. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!